Greetings everybody, this is Sliced Lime and we are here with another tutorial. We usually do these starting in a freshly generated random world and this one is actually no different. The only change is we've started this one in a super flat world. We're going to talk about the redstone and command block performance and that's why we were here in the special world. So I'm going to be teaching you the difference between a frame rate lag or low frame rate in Minecraft and the block lag. So before the end of this video, you will learn how to run 14,450 command blocks every tick without a single reduction in frame rate, even though, as it will turn out, this will not be very useful. First of all, let me show you, I have my video settings frame max frame rate. So my frame rate is kept at 120 FPS. And if we start the performance graph, which is Alt F3, you can see that my frame rate is actually 120 FPS. I have zero chunk updates. The frame rate graph down at the bottom is showing a very, very steady frame rate. This will, of course, depend on your computer. If you have a uh, very, very fast computer, you will easily attain these frame rates in this kind of world. And if you have a slower computer, you will have a more choppy frame rate or a lower frame rate. To do this, we also need to learn about spawn chunks and where things update in Minecraft. So I spawned in on some very high coordinates here, 1000x and uh, 2000z. So what we're going to do is we're going to teleport myself to some very specific coordinates and I will explain this in a little bit. And there we go. So 136, 56, 136. And what we're going to do is we're going to do set world spawn. Those are very specifically chosen to generate a maximum number of chunks in a certain configuration. So Normally in Minecraft you get spawn chunks in a 16 by 16 grid. But there's a special case that if you set your spawn location to the very very center of a chunk, which you can see in the left hand side here it says chunk 888 in 838. So what that means is this block I'm standing on, or actually this, uh, this corner of the block right here, is the absolute center of this chunk. A chunk is 16 blocks, so 8 is the center of it, and it is the center of the 8th chunk. That actually means you get one extra spawn chunk in every direction, so we have 17 by 17 spawn chunks. Now, why exactly here? Why 136? 136. And that is because if you were to move half of 17 chunks in this direction, which is negative x, negative z, so if you were to move to the very, very edge, of the spawn chunks, you would end up here at zero, zero. Let's uh, give myself a command block and let's grab some other stuff and we'll take a look at some performance. So let's start by making a clock here. So this is a normal redstone clock. Now if you look at the menu, what's happened is we get 20 chunk updates from this. Chunk updates are what happens when the Minecraft client needs to update the lighting level or block states in a chunk. Now these two blinking at 20 times per second means we get 20 chunk updates. And that doesn't appear to have any impact on my performance. I still have 120 FPS. But if we bring up this graph, we can see that the actual frame times are now a slight bit higher. So those 20 chunk updates actually do cause some performance degradation. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a fill clock. You might have heard about the clocking blocks limit. There's a 63 clocking blocks limit and I'll show you what that is about here. But first of all, let's examine this clock in terms of performance. So let's do fill. And let's make it a 12 block offset. So we have 13 blocks. And I will uh, explain why that number is significant in a little bit here. So here we go. Now we have a bunch of pulsating redstone blocks here. And if we again take a look at the performance graph, we can see that I have a smooth frame rate. I have zero chunk updates and my frame rate is still solidly at 120 FPS. And all of these are being triggered. Uh, now these are 12 offset from this, so there's 13 redstone blocks and two command blocks. 
So at this point, we have 15 blocks updating every tick. So that is what we call a clocking block. That's a block being updated on a clock. Simple as that. That's 15, so let's start filling them out. I'll get back to you when I've done a whole bunch of these. All right, so now I've filled this in and note here that most of these are empty, but as you can see, it's it actually gets an output here, unknown command. So it's actually running and updating this block. It doesn't matter if it's empty or not. It's actually running it and running it is what causes the problem. So these are four blocks around uh, each of these blocks down 12 of these pulsating redstone blocks. So we have 12 times four command blocks here, that's 48 command blocks, and then one odd one here, and one odd one here. So that gives us 50 command blocks. And then we had the 13 redstone blocks under here, so we have 63 clocking blocks in this. And remember I talked about the 63 clocking blocks limit. We can check our performance here, 120 FPS, still uh, not much in terms of update time, and still zero chunk updates. So why is the 63 clocking blocks limit a thing? What is the problem that causes our lag when we place the 64? Well, check out what happens when I place this command block. My frame times spike a whole bunch and my chunk updates go crazy. I get 200 chunk updates just from that placing that one extra block. Something happens internally in Minecraft which forces it to update this chunk 200 times. Just going above the 63 limit makes your chunk updates go completely nuts from just a single chunk. And if you do this in multiple chunks, you're gonna get that effect worsened every time. So, it is very important that we update no more than 63 blocks in every chunk every tick. And the easiest way to do that is by simply reducing this clock by one, making it 12 long. So we now have this block is no longer being updated, but this one is, and then capping this off with another command block. Now we have 62 blocks on this clock, and that is actually the maximum number of command blocks you can execute per tick in a single chunk. If you tried to extend this, you would just waste one clocking block on another redstone block, which wouldn't really help you. So now we have 62 clocking blocks in this chunk, out of which 50 are command blocks. Now, if we take a look at this, we can notice that we're still fine in uh, FPS, and we still don't have many chunk updates. We have 17 by 17 spawn chunks. Is there anything preventing us from doing this whole clock? in 17 by 17 spawn chunks? Well, as it turns out, no. <laughs> There's nothing at all in this game that prevents us from running this amount of command blocks without getting a single chunk update. And here we go. We now have two clocks, 50 command blocks each, so we have 100 command blocks running every tick. Look at the performance. It's getting slightly worse, but still no chunk updates and 120 FPS. Now, we want to do this on a large scale, and I'm too lazy to be copying these blocks all over the place. So we're going to use a trick that we used before in our uh, finding blocks placed by the players tutorial. And this block that I'm standing on is uh, 259. Uh, well, where I'm standing is 259 too, so two down where the redstone block under here is, is 257 too. So we're going to do summon armor stand uh, 257 too. And we're going to give it a short name S and no gravity one marker one that gives us an armor stand so if we remove this we'll see that we have an armor stand stand there now we're going to do execute at e name equals s and we're going to summon an armor stand and an offset of 16 x now we have two do it again three two now we have four do it again with 64, now we have 8, and 128, now we have 16. So, let's keep doing that in the same X row, but now we're gonna move 16 on the Z axis. Now we have double that amount, and double again, and double again, and double again. Now we have 256 armor stands. 
we're going to use those to set up our clocks. So what we're going to do is we want to do a fill command on suex first, minus one on x axis and 11 blocks along. We're going to fill with a command block. There we go. All of those. That's a lot of blocks. But we've overwritten these, so we no longer have them. Oops, we no, no longer have them clocking. So positive x is destruction. This block will execute first. We're going to do execute at e name equals s. And we're going to run the fill commands. So fill from the point where the armor stand is, because it's standing in the middle of the clock. And 11 blocks offset down there, and stone. So now if we look and place this one block, it's going to be stone. And if we take a look over here, we have a stone block there too. So it's working on all of these clocks. And now we're going to do, let's copy this and change it around so that we fill with redstone blocks. Now then. 256 clocks of 50 blocks each. Let's start it up. There we go, and place a block there. Are you noticing something? My frame rate is still mostly fine, like it's lagging a little bit, but I'm still pretty much at 120 FPS. And zero chunk updates. I've dropped a bit under 20, and we're lagging a bit, but we're still at zero chunk updates. So let's do the math here. That's 256. We bring up a calculator. That's 256 times 50. That's 12,800 command blocks running every tick with almost no reduction in frame rate. Granted, I'm running this on a monster computer, but still we're running 12,800 command blocks every tick without any single chunk update. And that is what's saving our frame rate. Is everything good then? Well, no, probably not quite. Let's add our scoreboard. Score objectives add T dummy. Scoreboard objectives set this place sidebar T. Now, in one of these clocking blocks, we're going to do scoreboard players add TT1. Uh, so <laughs> now you can see that the actual rate that the server is running at is fairly low. And if you try to play on this world, it would be incredibly laggy and you would get the block lag. This is what block lag actually is. Block lag is the Minecraft server being overloaded. You can't see it on the client. And even though you're running it in single player, the Minecraft game still runs as a separate server and client instance internally. We can see that the clock is having serious problem keeping up, even though my frame rate is perfectly fine here. And I'm running at basically 120 FPS, like way over 60 FPS anyway, which is the rate I'm recording this at. How do we get around this? As you might recall, my Predator armor system used 140 some thousand command blocks, and this is just 12, almost 13,000, and it's lagging our game to pieces. Now we're running only this one clock and we're getting tick updates at the rate we should be getting them again. Let's add another command to this clock. I'm going to use a dummy, dummy name in the scoreboard, scoreboard players set 5t5. So that what this command does is it uses a modular operator on the t value and really what you need to know about this is it will wrap the number back down to zero when it hits five. So as you can see it's counting zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. We can actually use this to address different clocks on different times and what you normally attempt to do and at least what I attempted to do when I got that the first time was to set a redstone block and then set a stone block uh, to reset the clock. The problem is that actually causes a chunk update, which you don't want, so that lags your game more. Instead, what you want to do is you want to do exactly the sequence that we did here. You want to keep them with redstone all the time, and you want to fill with stone and then with redstone. 
So how would we do that? Well, we could take this row, for instance, and we could take all of these armor stands and call them something different. Let's call them T instead of S. Uh, entity data. And I need to be lower for that to work. There we go. We rename the whole bunch of them to T. We have this clock. It's running all the time. So we're going to want to do execute command off of something off of this T character here. We can't do that. In my predator world, I use a, a separate armor stand called T. Uh, but we can just as well run this off of me in this case. So let's uh, just do that. And wait here. And let's go over to players reset to get rid of that. Now we can see my name uh, going uh, between 0 and 5 in the scoreboard. So what I can do is execute at a score t equals 0, score t min equals 0. Now I'm executing only when the tick is 0. And what I'm going to do then is execute at e name equals s. Fail. Still. So if we take a look at this, this is redstone. This is turned to stone. Now, of course, we can do the same thing again, but with the redstone block. <laughs> and now you can see whatever the counter hits zero, we're running all of these blocks, except this one. So, whoops. <laughs> I've pasted something poorly here. <laughs> pasted the wrong block. Anyway, this is a clear demonstration that if you split these up into uh, five different groups, you would get five times the performance. And if you do that enough times, you will get good enough performance to run all of them at once. That's the same that I did in the Predator Armor system, where I actually used five different ticks. Split all the commands that run all the time over five different sets, so that you get an even spread of commands being executed. We can demonstrate this by changing this to execute on T instead of S. And you will see that now we're executing only these ones, and they're executing not as fast as a normal fill clock, but you can you can clearly see that these are now working very very quickly, and we are not getting any lag, as you can see in the sidebar where my number is counting up just as quickly as before. So summary of redstone performance. Anything that causes a change in a block, be it a redstone signal that changes value, a redstone torch that switches on or off, or is simply a block that gets replaced visibly at the end of the frame, causes a chunk update. Chunk updates kill performance. So avoid that at all cost. You can run many, many, many command blocks with perfect frame rate, but they will still lag your game. That's what causes block lag. And you can get around lock lag by splitting your commands into several ticks or by simply reducing the amount that you need to run at all. And in order to do that, you make sure that you keep all the redstone blocks as redstone blocks and you fill first with stone or another solid block and then with redstone blocks. That causes a update of at most 62 blocks as long as you keep your clocks down to length 12 or less but it doesn't cause a chunk update. I hope some of that made sense, at least, and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.